Hey everyone, welcome back to another Kevin's Creations here on Geektopia Island. I'm Kevin. I'm Cardwell. And today we're playing a fun uh, new, with the new AO4 ruler, Gil Lapis. We're playing our boy again. Yep. Um, but before we get into it guys, we just remind you that we do have a Patreon. The link will be down below. Go check it out. It really just takes an extra dollar to give us some love and support and we greatly appreciate it. Um, with that, we're going to delve into what's in a name. Because, you know, Gil Lapis is all about naming things. Exactly. And he's really strong. I just played him in the last GP and I did really well for what it was, but it's not Alter and he'll be really good in Cluster. That's, that's where he needs to be. So, anyways, he is the Black Ruler from AO4. Uh, his Judgment is a Black Black and a Moon Mana. Or a Moon Will. And then whenever a Darkness Regalia is a field under your control, you choose one. Then if that Regalia is World Ender, you choose one again. And his two options you can choose is look at the top three of your deck, put one in your hand, and put the rest in the bottom. In any order. Or, you can name a card and then you gain Limit Break of that card. Yep. And his other ability is you can pay Moon Mana or moon arts and minions with any will. That's really good. Yeah, that is super strong for what you can do. Also with his two abilities, you can choose to look at the top three first, and then if you find the one you need, then you can name it. Yeah. So that's the thing about it, is you don't have to choose them both when you do it. It's just you look first and be like, hey cool, I wanna choose this one. Um, and then when he judgments, he has flying for a 12-12. Just awesome. good, good stats. Uh, enter, you search your deck for a minion, put it in the field, and if you do, gain limit break of that minion, then shuffle your deck. And then this card gets plus eight, plus eight, and precision as long as you have his limit break, because he has his own. Um, and then you can tap, destroy target, resonate until the end of the game. You may play all God's Art abilities you played this game as additional time. And it's God's Art is a black and a moon. This card gains, resonate as your opponent's control, get minus four, minus four. Yes. So more often than not, I there's countless times when I was down playing this deck that I would judgment on turn three. Just to be like, cool, get this limit break, because it, it literally gives you a free limit break. Yeah. And when you need that, it's really nice, because you can get all the cool limit break dudes that we have. Um, but being able to just tap kill a dude is really, really strong. Even if you don't get to recur the God's Art, every turn I can kill one of your dudes. Yeah, exactly. And the fact that even when you do God's Art, it's minus four, minus four. So you're already ahead. Yeah. And then you kill a dude, and then it happens again. And you're just like, oh, thanks. Enjoy that. But first, uh, the first resonator, of course, is Yudrasil, Horic Spirit of the World Tree. It's a one will of any color of whatever you want to do. So enter. Search your deck for a Regalia that shares the same attribute that you paid to play this card. Reveal it, put it in your hand, and shuffle your deck. Tap, produce one will of any attribute, spin this only to play uh, Regalias. Simple yeah. as that. I highly underestimated that how good that card is until I played it in this because it, that card fuels this deck so easily because Gil, like, lives and dies off of his regalia yeah. severely and being able to go get one on turn one and always have it for turn two is really nice and the fact that you can tap her for so you can actually have three mana up when the yeah. thing drops yeah it is super strong how good your still is in this cluster yeah uh next up is mikage reya it is a one black quick cast four four with Flying and enter, you search your deck for a darkness card, put it into your graveyard, then shove your deck. Vampires you control gain drain. And then whenever this card is banished as an additional cost of a mage art or an effect of a mage art, put this card in your, from your graveyard into your hand. This right now is probably one of the best one drops in the game. Because she's just she sets up so much, and I promise you I'm gonna use her a lot in a lot of decks yeah. because she's just that strong. She's Geektopia's Bay right now. She's just really I, she is so very, good. very good just to be like, hey, I'm gonna go get this. Cause it's it's very toolboxy and you can do a lot with it. Alright, the next one is Miria, the Fallen Vampire. Uh it's a one drop flying four four inner. This card deals four on your damage to target resonator, you gain that much life, which is pretty nice. When this card is revealed by the ability of Gil, you control it, it deals four hundred damage to the target resonator, you gain that much life. So you can play Regalia, reveal it, till four, player, deal another four. But if you have Lemon Break, this card deals damage, it deals double, double that damage instead. Just in general. Yeah. So you gain double the life as well. Yeah, don't forget that because that is super strong. Even when she's attacking or dealing damage, she's she deals eight damage as just damage because she still gets to do stuff in combat. Yeah. And against uh, aggro, she's one of your best cards because you're like, cool, deal eight, I gain eight. Yeah. And you need it. And kill that thing. And then, of course, with Makage Rea, uh, you gain double the life. Because yeah. it's her trigger and then Makage's trigger that she has. Yeah. 
drain. Uh, next up is probably one of the best cards in Gil Lapis for Gil Lapis. Ever. Is Sylvia, the minion of Lapis. A red and a green for a minion. She's a 7-7 seven, seven swiftness. You pay a moon, she gains plus 3 plus 0. Oh. And limit break, she gets plus 3 plus 3 flying, and whenever this card attacks, it does that much damage to target J slash resonator your opponent controls. Yeah. So she doesn't care what it is that she shoots. And I so many games, you're like turn one with the coin, you'd go world ender, name her take ten. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because you get to play her off of world ender, because world ender adds for minions. Yep. And you just get free 10, dam 10 damage on turn one. And the fact that uh, I forgot it had flying too. Yeah, no, a lot of people didn't realize she has flying when she gets limit broke and that gets to wreck people. Yeah. Because they're always like, cool, I can block her with my other dude. I'm like, no, I can't. Yeah. And you play, if you played your one draw, the she that thing's gone. It's yeah. Dead. The next one, of course, is Lineth, the Dark Priest uh, Priestess. She has Drain, Bane, and she costs two Dark Will and a Moon Will for a 10 10. So that's pretty powerful, but of course you have to have moon. She has limit break as well. Flying barrier resonator. Enter, choose one. Destroy target regalia, destroy all stranger resonators, reveal a 12 apostle from outside the game and put it in the field. Yeah. So, so pretty... with the Yggdrasil, you get her turn two, which is very, very strong. Yeah. Cause you're like, cool, limit break her on turn two with the world ender, whatever. And at that time you usually kill regalia but sometimes you just need to be like, cool, kill all strangers. Yeah. Or just put a giant big old thing. Like, she is so strong in this deck just because she gets you, in this format, she's really strong because she kills Regalia. Yeah. And she's got Drain and Bane. Like, a lot of people forget that she can just be like, kill that thing and then gain life. Yeah, 10-10 ten, ten Drain Bane. That's pretty uh, good, right? Again, against aggro, you play Lineth as quick as you can because she's got Drain. Oh, yeah. So, I was talking about Rhea. I have a lot of toolboxy cards in this deck, and that's what we're going to go over next is all the toolboxy dudes. The first one is Wanderer in the Nightmare Land. She's black, black, and a blue for an 8-8. Eight, eight. Enter, choose a number. Your opponent banishes a resonator with total cost equal to that number. This card is awakened. Your opponent banishes all resonators equal to that number instead, and you choose a stranger from your hand. You don't have a stranger deck, so it doesn't matter on that part. Yeah. But it just board wipes, and that's what you need. Awakening is remove three resonators in your graveyard from the game. Yeah, so it's wall. pretty easy to do, and you don't you don't need to, but it just it helps you get around the uh, if you need to kill a dude for sure. Yeah. Next one, of course, is Necromancer. It's a two black and a green, seven, seven. Enter, remove all resonators that target player's graveyard from the game, put a one, one counter, counter, counter on this card for each resonator removed. So that's pretty good. Yeah, fight Rizard, you play this dude. Oh yeah. Uh, next is Nidhogg. He is a black, black, and a white, white. He is a 12, 12 flyer, you gain barrier. Uh, enter, look at your opponent's hand, choose two cards, they remove him from the game. As long as Nidhogg is still there, they get him back when Nidhogg dies. So early, if you can bring him into play, you get to take two cards from their hand and they can't really do anything about it. Yeah. Now we have Mikage Sudro, also like the granddaddy of probably Geektopia. So yeah. good. Uh, so I'm going to do it as the card says. Uh, darkness, darkness, forest, darkness. <laughs> or wind, darkness. So it has flying precision, 12-12. But whenever a resonator dealt damage by this card, this turn put in the graveyard, put, put under the field under your control, it gains darkness in addition and is a vampire as well. So, remove a stranger resonator from the graveyard, which you don't have, so we don't need to worry about that. But, enter, you may pay any amount of life that still is damage to, that much damage to target resonator your opponent controls. And then you hopefully kill that dude, and it comes back on your side. Yeah. And yeah, if, it, if you have Mikage Rea, then you don't lose any life. Yeah, because he gains drain then. But this dude is insane because he gets to kill a dude and then keep killing dudes, and you get free dudes. Just constantly. Yes. Uh, next is Blazer. It is a black, black, and red, red for a 10 10 flyer. Enter, target J resonator, your opponent control loses all abilities until the end of turn, then destroy it. If your J ruler is destroyed this way, your, then your ruler on the other side loses all of its abilities as well. I This card is nuts. It's insane. It's a really good one of with Rhea because you can go get it. And I've had it happen to me before and on a Gil Lapis on the front side without his ability is real, real sad. Yeah. Like it's, it's really, really sad. <clears throat> Next, of course, is just Griffin. Uh, it's a... Uh... Cost six, quote unquote, 12 12 flyer. When this card ends your field, put the top two cards of your magic stone onto your deck in the field. Simple as that. Yeah. You get him in play really, really, so it just makes you like Yeah. Uh, next is the Black Moonlight. It's a one black uh, quick cast. Target resonator gets plus eight, plus eight. And if you control limit break, it gains eternal and barrier. So you just use it on whatever you need for, for barrier. Or if you have two of them, you get to hit for 26 
on uh, Sylvia really quickly, and they can't really do anything about it. Sad. Very sad. Uh, Curse of Caduceus. It's a One Darkness edition. Uh, opponent can't cannot gain life. Your opponents cannot recover HDs in the phase other than their recovery phase. And then tap your opponent loses 200. Seems solid. It seems just a basic awesome card. Yeah. Right now it's there to stop the drain cards. Yeah. Uh, next is Dark Summoning. There's one black quick cast. Draw a card. If you control Limit Break Lineth, you search your deck for a card and put it in your hand. So you just get to do what go gift you need because you're almost always going to have a Lineth Limit Break because she's really, really strong. Yeah. Part of True Power, one of the most powerful spells. It's a, a black and green Mage Art Remnant so you can cast it from the graveyard. As an additional cost to play this card, Banish a Resonator. Okay. Put a target uh, Darkness Resonator from your graveyard to the field. So, yay. Yeah. So all those dudes that we talked about that are one ofs, you just go get them and do them turn one or turn two. You're yeah. like, cool. And then play this thing. Sacrifice this with Makagaria, you get her back, you can play her again and then do it again. And it's just amazing. Yeah. Next up is World Ender, which is his regalia. It is two black uh, mythic. Your J ruler gains imperishable. So when Guilt dies, you can just keep doing it and keep getting more yep. minions. And then tap, produce two will of any attribute of moon or black. Spin this will only for God's arts, minions, or moon arts. And this is how you play a lot of your spells and creatures easily because you play you always like a black and a moon with this with for Lineth and whatever your other stone is yeah and it, it, this card's just so good in this deck you have to have it like you just have to next one is death scythe it's a uh, darkness <clears throat> and green regalia mythic so it produces any combination of green and black spin this only play god's art abilities mage arts and cards in a graveyard activate abilities cards in the graveyard and then you can remove three guards from the graveyard from the game and put this into the field or into your hand so yeah. therefore you can cast it and trigger everything again. Yeah, and being able to search this up with a Yggdrasil and then play it <clears throat> and have part of true power ready, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Next is Gil's big card. It is into the world. It is two black and two moon. And you choose one. And if you have limit break Gil Lapis, you choose four. Your opponent banishes two resonators. You draw two cards. Your opponent discards two cards and you get back two dudes from your graveyard to the field. Oh my God. So all those big dudes that we talked about they really fun to bring back because you're like, well, into the world, get back a blazer and a Mikage, yeah. and kill your two dudes. It literally does everything you need to ha win in a game. Yeah, and this with a Nidhogg, then you get free four cards out of their hand. Yeah. And they can't really stop you. No, not one bit. It's it gets insane. nuts how much this card has value. It's great. Uh, always play a 10 out of 10 forever. Yeah. The stones are really simple. We have one Scorched Bales, uh, one Dark Depths, for Black Silence and then Black Moon Memorias, which is the Black and Moonstone. Not too bad. Uh, we don't have anything like, we have a couple honorable mentions and a couple of cards that I have to talk about because they go with Lineth, but other than that, that's it for the sideboard for now. So the first one we got is an honorable mention. It is Sylvia's Burning Flame. It is one red moon art with quick cast. Choose one. If you control Limit Break Sylvia, you choose two. Target J Resonator gains plus eight plus O. First Strike, Precision, and Pierce. And then this card deals 800 damage to target J Resonator. Simple as that. It's really good against aggro because you can kill whatever you need to. Or with the Sylvia, you're just like, I'm going to one-shot you because you're like plus eight, plus eight, go. Yeah. And if you blocked it, then it, you, the dude takes eight damage and all that damage <clears throat> goes through, which is ridiculous. The other card for the honorable mention is Black Moon Ray. It is one black, quick cast. Destroy target J Ruler or Stranger Resonator An Awakening of a Moon. Players cannot chase this card. You have to have this card in this format right now with Galapis because Melgus is a card and it, it's disgusting. Melgus is like, kill you turn two, so you have this to be like, no. Yeah. Like, no, <laughs> thanks. Stop, stop, just stop. For sure. No, of course, <clears throat> we have to bring in the 12 Apostles for Lineth. And the first one is Phoenix, the Flame of the World. It's three red and one. It, it has flying. And then when this card enters the field, it deals 300 damage to each resonator your opponent controls. And then also when this card is put in the graveyard from your field, you may pay two red if you do put this card in the, uh, in the field as well. Yeah, and it's just kind of like a board wipe if you need it, and it helps. For sure. And then of course the next is Athena, Titan of Revenge. Two red, uh, Swiftness 7-7, seven, seven. whenever damage <clears throat> is dealt to you, put two 1-1 one -one counters on this card and you pay a red. This card deals 100 damage to each player. So that's pretty cute. Yeah, she just gets crazy big if she gets to sit and play for a while. And with Lineth on turn three or turn two, you're like, cool, I have this and this, so I have 17 power on turn two. Yeah. Pretty good. Exactly. Uh, but that is it for the deck, guys. The deck list will be down below. It is super fun to play. It is really powerful and really like strong for what it is. 
and it's got a lot of versatility. But go check it out and see what you like. We'll see y'all again next time. Goodbye. Later. Also guys, make sure you hit that like button down below and subscribe to our channel and then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos. And we go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our Mythic and Above Patreon followers. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that, we love you. Thank you for your support.